there. So let's. Uh, I'll start on this side and kind of work our way across here. Um, who would you fire and why? Go ahead. This one. Uh, Samuel Jackson's character because he died too early in the movie. You fired him because he dies early. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Go ahead. Oh, the Black Widow, a manipulator. <laughs> She's a good fighter, too. All right, going back here. Who else? Who else? What'd you talk about? Up here. Don't be shy. <laughs> Say again. You would fire Thor. <laughs> Okay, he said he'd fire Thor because we already have our own guy. Okay. All right. Bonus points for the power How about back here? Can we go back there? Who's going to tell him he's fired? They say it again? Who's going to tell him he's fired? Well, uh, <laughs> what's, that, what's that one uh, group? Uh, human, human resources. Yeah. We just send them a memo. Okay, let's start with the Hulk. Why the Hulk? Too destructive, too much Just anger. Too yeah. out there, right? Yeah. And the other one? Captain America. The Captain? Ah, yeah. Why? He didn't do anything in the movie. Because they told him to have done without him. Courage. So we could have done without him. Yes. All he has is that. That shield. Oh, yeah. 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 How about over here? Anybody else? And Hawkeye? Yeah, All right, really hey, Shannon, who would you keep? something incriminating so they could bring charges against them. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger in the dirt. But they kept at him. They kept badgering him. We have a badger with us today. <laughs> he straightened up and said, the sinless one among you, go first. Throw the stone. Bending down again, he wrote some more in the dirt. Hearing that, they walked away, one after another, beginning with the oldest. The woman was left alone. Jesus stood up and spoke to her and said, 
Woman, where are they? Does no one condemn you? No one, Master. Neither do I, said Jesus. Go on your way from now on and don't sin. There's a very powerful story here of who's allowed in. Maybe at first this lady shouldn't have been allowed in. But Jesus makes it clear to everyone, hey, you are welcome here. You're welcome on my team. Just because of your past, just because of what you've done, I'm here. And Jesus says, come on in. We welcome you to be part of our team. The, the, the fun thing about that, uh, that story, I would love to know what Jesus wrote in the sand. Wouldn't you? My guess is, this is going to be good. <laughs> Wait until you hear what I tell them. <laughs> when you just really love to know, take that, jerk. Something like that. I don't know. But the story says, she's welcome. Because of what she did, she's welcome in our team. She's welcome to be a part of it. Takes us to another story where Jesus has another encounter, this time with a, a lady at a well. And, and there was a lady that, uh, uh, back in the time, in the culture, in the context of when it was written, uh, Jesus should have never, you know, uh, talked to her. Uh, culturally, he, he shouldn't have been part of, of her life. So here's what happens. We're at John 4. I have 23 and 24 up here, but I want to read a little bit more to you before we get to that part. It says, uh, a woman, a Samaritan, came to draw water. Jesus said, would you give me a drink of water? The Samaritan woman, taken aback, said, well, how come you, a Jew, are asking me a Samaritan for a drink. Jews in those days wouldn't be caught dead talking to Samaritans. What Jesus answered, if you knew the generosity of God and who I am, you would be asking me for a drink, and I would give you fresh living water. The woman said, sir, you don't even have a bucket to draw with, and this well is deep. How are you going to get this living water? Are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob who dug this well and drank from it? He and his sons and livestock passed it down to us. Jesus said, everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again. Anyone who drinks the water I give will never thirst, not ever. The water I give will be an artesian spring within, gushing fountains of endless life. The woman said, sir, give me this water so I won't ever get thirsty, and I won't have to come back to this well. Well, he said, go call your husband and then come back. I have no husband, she said. Well, that's nicely put. I have no husband. You've had five husbands, and the man you're living with now isn't even your husband. So you spoke the truth. Oh, so you're a prophet. Well, tell me this. Our ancestors worshipped God on this high mountain, but you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place for worship, right? Believe me, the time is coming when you Samaritans will worship the Father, neither here at this mountain we're there in Jerusalem. You worship guessing in the dark. We Jews worship in the clear light of the day. God's way of salvation is made available through the Jews. But the time is coming. In fact, it has come. When what you're called will not matter. And where you go to worship will not matter. It is who you are and the way you live that count before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people the Father is looking out for. Those who are simply and honestly themselves be before Him in their worship. God is sheer being itself, spirit. Those who worship Him must do it out of their very being, their spirits, their true selves in adoration. The woman said, I don't know about that. I do know that the Messiah is coming, and when he arrives, we'll get the whole story. I am he, said Jesus. You don't have to wait any longer or look any further. So Jesus spent this time with, with this lady. You, you can see there's some tension there. There's some questions on her side. Uh, you, you, Jesus knew her history. He knew it was kind of a rough history. But he still said, you know what? You're welcome. You're welcome on our team. You're welcome to be part of the group that helps save this world. Just because that stuff's happened in the past doesn't exclude you. You're welcome. And Jesus said, come on, you can be part of this. Everybody's going to be part of it. As long as you believe 
and you know Jesus, you're welcome on this team. The last one I want to share with you tonight is when Jesus was strung up on the cross, his last moments uh, on earth, he had a, a thief on each side of him. And they were hanging there with him, serving the death sentence. Luke 23, 39 through 43 brings us this, this uh, answer here. One of the criminals hanging alongside cursed him. Some Messiah you are. Save yourself, save us. But the other one made him shut up. Have you no fear of God? You're getting the same as him. We deserve this, but not him. He did nothing to deserve this. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you enter your kingdom. He said, don't worry, I will. Today, you will join me in paradise. There they are, the last minutes of their lives, hanging on a cross. And the message that Jesus says, welcome. Welcome. You're in. You're on the team. You can be part of, of this moving, this movement that is going to hang around for thousands of years and help change this, this world. Welcome. It doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter. Jesus says, forget about it. I've got you covered. You're welcome in here. You're welcome. You see, we're all on that cross right beside him. We all sin every day. Sometimes big stuff, sometimes little stuff, but we sin and it gets us. Romans 3, 23 and 24 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace and the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. There's the welcoming. Because we have sinned, we are justified to His grace. We're given a gift that we don't deserve. Even though we acted wrongly, or we spoke wrongly, or we thought wrongly, we did wrong, Jesus says, that's okay, I just want to be part of your life. And I welcome you in. There's nothing you can do to not make me love you. Anyone is welcome in. So what's our superhero challenge? Even, not just tonight's superhero challenge, the whole series. The whole last uh, seven, eight weeks we've done this. What's the superhero challenge? It's simple. Will you live a marvelous life? It's easy to let life get us down. It's easy to want to go to the dark side. But these superheroes, and maybe when you see them, you'll think of them. Or when you see a comic book or a cartoon flash on the screen for a second. Remember that God's given you everything to do these. God's put people around you to help be the Avengers, to help save this world. And who can be on this team? Anyone. Jesus says, anyone is welcome. We've all sinned. We've all done wrong. But because God sent his son, he paid the price for that. And every single person can come to us. You see, everyone is welcome on this team. That brings us up to our time of communion tonight. And really, that's what communion is all about. Saying, welcome. Welcome to the family. The family of Jesus. To, to know Jesus in your heart. And communion is coming together. That's what it means to come together. And so we celebrate uh, communion tonight. If I could have my uh, helpers come on up here.